Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno and welcome back to my C++ series. So today, let's get our tools set up. So in order for us to write programs in C++, we need to have a computer and then a set of tools that will let us build C++ programs. These tools, of course, are going to depend on which operating system you're using. So this video is gonna cover Windows, but if you're using Mac or Linux, then just click on the screen and you'll be taken to those videos because I made them as well. All right, so Windows. Excellent choice because Windows is the most widely used operating system in the games industry. Now to write C++ code, all you really need is just some kind of text editor, like Notepad for example will do fine. However, once you've written that code in C++ as a text file, we need to take that and pass it through a compiler to generate some kind of executable binary so that we can run our program. So what we need at the very minimum is a compiler that will take that text that we've written and convert it into a program. However, we can do a lot better than that. Writing C++ isn't the easiest task and if you're using something like Notepad, it's really just gonna not help you at all. So what you can do instead is actually get a development environment, something called an integrated development environment. This is basically a set of tools that helps you write and debug your code. In our case, since we're on Windows, we're gonna be using something called Microsoft Visual Studio, which is pretty much the best IDE out there. Now don't get me wrong, it's far from perfect, but it is the best thing that we've got. I've used a lot of different IDEs and it's by far my favorite. Visual Studio has plugins that will help you target pretty much any platform, like PC, mobile, consoles, everything. Which is why it's the most popular IDE in the games industry. So without further ado, let's go ahead and install that. All right, so here we have Windows 10. Doesn't really matter what version of Windows you're using. We're gonna basically head on over to visualstudio.com. Link will be in the description if you don't wanna type that out. We're gonna click on download Visual Studio and we're gonna get Community 2017. Now, Visual Studio Community is absolutely free. And once it's downloaded, we're gonna to wanna to install that. And installing Visual Studio will take a significant amount of time. So you might wanna come back. Now this is Visual Studio 2017, which is quite a bit better than 2015. It's a lot faster and it has some pretty nice new features. And it's also gonna be the IDE that we use for the entirety of this series. Now while this is happening, I wanna quickly mention that there is actually a plugin called Visual Assist, which I use just all the time. I haven't used Visual Studio without Visual Assist for probably the last two years. It's amazing. Now it does cost money. It's like, I think it's $99. Yeah, $99 for a personal license, but if you do write a lot of code in Visual Studio, I highly recommend it, it's amazing. It basically just gives you a lot of features the Visual Studio is missing. And I mean, they're not paying me to say that, I genuinely love Visual Assist, so yeah. All right, so Visual Studio is taking its time as usual. Now in terms of what components we want, Visual Studio 2017 has this brand new installer that has like a lot of things, way more than 2015. Um, the gist of what we really want is, the easiest way to go through this is just to pick desktop development with C++. That includes pretty much everything you need. We don't need uni universal Windows platform development. That's actually, that's something called UWP, which is actually something entirely different. Uh, .NET is something that you probably want to install if you're using stuff like C Sharp. I'm actually going to be using that, so I might install that. But all you really need to follow along with this series is going to be C++, um, desktop development with C++. And you don't actually need everything that's included in here. Like this has stuff like um, C++ tool for CMake and ATL support, and we don't really need that. But uh, the easiest way, again, to install this is just to click on desktop development with C++ and be done with it. So we'll hit install. And now it's gonna start downloading and installing everything we need. So this will really take a while. All right, so now that Visual Studio is installed, let's go ahead and launch it. You can either click, click launch or you can, you know, get rid of this and then click launch, it's up to you. So Visual Studio, open. You're gonna to wanna to probably log in with your account. This is just any Microsoft account. Okay, and here we see this start page. So, things that I like to get done out of the box, I like to customize my settings and stuff like that. For example, under tools, options, you can go and change to dark mode, for example. I quite like dark mode, there's a color theme. You can just go ahead and change that to dark. You can see it's actually already loaded my settings just from the cloud and everything. Now I've set up Visual Studio the way that I like to use it, including like the syntax highlighting theme and everything like that. If you guys want to use the same settings as me, you can just go ahead and go to the channel.com forward slash VS. The link will be in the, in the description and you'll download this VS settings file. Once you've downloaded that file, you're going to want to put it into documents, Visual Studio 2017 settings, and then just paste it in there. And then back in Visual Studio, you can go tools, import and export settings, import selected environment settings, hit next. Just import new settings, don't worry about exporting your old one since it's a fresh install. Uh, Cherno VS is the one you wanna use. 
Um, and then of course set up any setting, well, all of them is really what you want. Um, under general settings it hasn't done everything, but I mean the default options are usually pretty good. Just hit finish and everything uh, should work. Now, if you don't have Visual Assist installed, you, you might get some warnings. I haven't actually installed Visual Assist. I might install it and then, you know, rerun this thing. But anyway, if you hit close, everything should be set up the way that I like it now. So let's just make sure everything works by creating a new solution. Uh, you can actually click on, um, there's a bunch of project templates. I'm not sure, the Visual Studio 2017 has changed a bit, but basically we're just gonna go file new project. Uh, and then under Visual C++, under general, there'll be a template called empty project. We're gonna select that. Uh, put it any way you like. I recommend that you put it into C dev. I've actually made a folder for it inside C dev and then CPP series. The reason I don't like having it here because first of all, this path is huge. Second of all, you'll see in my case, this path actually has a space in it, which will cause problems with some plugins. For example, some components of NVIDIA's Android plugins for Visual Studio actually just won't work if your path has a space in it. So that's already bad news. Also, this puts it in your user's directory, which isn't really necessary. So I like to have it just literally C dev and then whatever my project is. So in this case, CPP series, that's actually where I'm gonna put it. Um, you can give it a name. I'll call this Hello World. We're literally just gonna write a little Hello World application that will print Hello World to the console and test out our entire Tool chain. Now you'll see there's also something called a solution name. Visual Studio has solutions and projects. Think of a solution as like a group of projects that are related to each other. They can be various project types. Basically a solution is like your workbench. And then each project is essentially just a group of files which compile into some kind of target binary, whether that be a library or an actual executable. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm just gonna hit okay. And we should be taken into our project. All right, now I like to have my solution explorer on the left. All we're gonna do for now is right click on source files, hit add new item under C++ file. We're just going to call it main.cpp, hit add. Then I'm gonna type hash include IO stream int main. And then I'm gonna do stdc out, hello world, std end line. I'm gonna type in stdcin.get. And then I'm gonna right click on my project and hit build. We'll have our output window show up and make sure that everything succeeded there. You can see that it's generated a hello world.exe file, which is an executable binary for Windows. And now you can run it either by going to this directory. In fact, let's let's take a look at this directory. Hey look, hello world.exe. So we can either run it by just double clicking it here and you can see there's our application, hello world. And if we press any key, then, well, if we press enter, it will terminate. Or we can run it by just clicking on local Windows debugger, which will actually build and run it. So there you go, and we're actually debugging the code right now. So that's it, we've got our application running. We've written our first application in C++ and we've verified that our tools work properly. If you guys had any problems with this or something didn't go according to plan, leave a comment below and we'll see if we can help you out. All right, sweet. So Visual Studio is installed and we're ready to go and learn some C++. Over the next few videos, we're gonna learn how C++ actually works. Knowing how C++ actually works is pretty much the biggest key to writing C++ code properly. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and if you really like this series, you can support it on Patreon. But until next time, goodbye. Vroom.